This hero brought the game to a small camp where he could play it undisturbed. This is fucking scary, isn't it? Greetings and salutations, my beautiful people. I'm Cat Icarus, and I love Halloween. And what better way is there to do a Halloween special than in a place like this? <laughs> oh yeah. When Halloween creeps up and out through the month of October, one cannot help but just feel its presence knocking at the window. It's cold, mystifying, and it evokes century-old cries of horror in the days of ritualistic ceremonies and ancient... Oh. And I, for one, can't seem to keep myself away from this beautiful little haunted cabin after my last Halloween special on Evil Dead, Hail to the King. But this time, this special won't be a review. And there won't be any voiceover. Instead, this feels like the perfect time to tackle my top 10 favourite scary tracks in video games, horror game related or not. Obviously, this list is going to be pretty fucking difficult because, sure, there are theories to well-written songs and, like, well-placed and well-directed scares in movies and games, but in terms of fear overall, it's completely subjective. Some people are scared of spiders and some find them absolutely adorable. It's just, you know, it's just one of those things. So please keep that in mind when I say that these top 10 scary songs scare me personally. Me. Look at the title of the video. My. Just for the record, I don't own any of these songs and any of the games and any of the co No, I don't own any of it and I'm not putting any fucking download links in the description because that's bullshit. If you like what you hear, buy the game because trust me, in most of these cases, you're not going to regret it at all. Now, the only real rules for this list are as follows. One song per franchise and I'm not going to be putting any manipulated songs on this list. So, you know, Song of Unhealing, as scary as you are, you can't, you, you don't count, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, it's nothing personal. By the way, heads up, just for the best effect, for the full effect, for the full caddy experience today, please save this video for the dead of the night, completely pitch black, with the volume turned right up in a pair of headphones. And without further ado, please enjoy. Oh, what was that? I, 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 I stood on, I stood on something. Oh! Well, to start this list off, I figured I'd begin a little bit tame. This song is from the game Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem and is also known as The Chosen. Now, I'm actually going with the intro of this song over the rest of the song because it gets more relaxing as it goes on. So, you know, this song isn't even scary in the traditional sense. It's more creepy and hideously unnerving. This song not only stirs up so many questions about the game itself, but also the crying in question. Was this person trapped? Was this person completely forgotten about? Or was this person banished for unleashing some unspeakable evil? Either way, it's suitably creepy and eerie for everything that the game stands for. And to be honest, it makes the hairs on the back of my neck stand up every time I hear it. Number 9 goes to the point-and-click adventure horror classic known as Clock Tower. And personally, I had only played the PS1 version of Clock Tower because, as you know, the PS1 is my baby. But this track in particular is called Scissor Man Chase. 
More specifically, the theme of the main antagonist of the game, Scissor Man. Sounds gruesome? <laughs> yeah, it kind of is, actually. This song succeeds like no other song by being perfectly placed and integrated into the game. And it just cuts through and pulsates through all of the quaint and ample puzzle solving of the game. It just it heightens up the tension unlike any song in any game I've ever played. And trust me, it's only heightened when you play it. And if you haven't played it or you're not scared of the song on its own, I urge you to play it because honestly, you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about and it takes on so much more meaning. Trust me. Number 8, much like the Scissor Man chase, is more about driving tension. And this song is from a game that I'm not even a fan of, Left 4 Dead. Why I'm not a fan of this game is another story entirely, but regardless, this great piece of orchestral terror is one by the name of Witch. The atonal scales in this song are very predominant here, and it's also very reminiscent of the Twilight Zone theme, combined with soprano choirs and heavy orchestral pounding and not to mention a fast-paced triplet feel to accompany and intertwine with the common timed 4-4 four, four bars. What's really great about this song though is not just by the compositional elements and the use of arpeggios, but also the way that the game progresses the song depending on where the player is on screen is pretty fucking smart. When the player is near a witch, it's pretty chilling. But then when the player is seen by a witch, that is when shit gets real. Now, when it comes to Pokemon, I'm not the biggest fan, I must admit, and I've only played a few of the games. But out of the few that I have played, I can kind of understand why the typical choice for this list would be Lavender Town. But for me, I never really found it scary. Off-centred and off-putting from the rest of the game, sure, but creepy? Not for me. But, one particular track from Pokemon Ruby, simply titled Drought, takes the cake for me. There's plenty of harsh and grating harmonic dissonance, and it never amounts to anything. It just loops and constantly loops, getting gradually more uncomfortable as more layers and more disjointed notes and beats are thrown into the mix to create a truly stomach-churning piece of music. Now we're at number 6. Now, if you guys have seen my Rayman 3D Tinker Time, then you would know that my opinions towards Rayman 2 is that it's an okay game. It's really, really easy to finish 100%, the combat is really laughably easy in places, and it's far too forgiving on health and checkpoints. But 
the presentation is fantastic, the control is great, and that soundtrack, sublime. But the track that I'm talking about today is The Tomb of the Ancients. And this song is so out of place from the rest of the game that it makes it so much more shocking as a result. I mean, even the Cave of Bad Dreams isn't as dark as this. We have some stringed instruments distortedly waving the piece along, which are then accompanied by seemingly random and horrific jarring motifs from all sorts of instruments, like string glissandos and crashing drums and even that evil fucking piano. It creates a perfect sense of atmospheric danger, tenseness and uneasiness for the whole game, and it's great. Sonic CD, a great game, a happy game, unless of course you live in the USA, in which case when you get to the boss battles you will regret everything you've ever done in your life. In Europe and Japan the boss battle music is fast paced, encouraging and groovy, it really is driving behind you and it's cheering you on as you try your hardest to defeat the many machines of Dr. Robotnik, but in the USA it further cements the fact that you have no chance at all. You will lose. You will die. This track is officially known as the Sonic CD US boss battle music, but I've decided to name it Fun is Infinite. Why? <laughs> Search it up. But regardless, few words can describe this song other than completely and utterly hellish. The chromatic scales and diatonic nonsense are made even more fucking horrific than when you see the secret hidden message in the sound test menu. I won't tell you how to get to it right now because there are plenty of other videos that cover that. But regardless, I'm now going to show you the song with the picture, with the secret message. Good luck. Um, but by the way, yes, it is the US version only. shit can really start getting real. We're on one of my favourite PS1 games and horror games in general ever made, Silent Hill. Now in terms of this list, Silent Hill was very fucking tricky because there are tons of scary tracks in every single Silent Hill game, but one in particular really stood out to me, called My Heaven. Sounds peaceful and serene, doesn't it? It really isn't. It's a juxtaposition to end all juxtapositions. And to be honest, it's just so distressing and so unpleasant that I could not put it at number four. And combining it with all of the devilish and horrible images in the game truly makes my blood curl. It isn't even a song in the traditional sense, and more just a series of menacing static noises and heavy, forceful and highly percussive blows to the soul. And the dynamics of the song truly claw and dig and drive at you and pushes the terror and helplessness further into you the louder it gets. It matches the mood perfectly for one of the most forbidding games in history. And it makes me fucking shiver. If this is their heaven, I honestly don't want to know their hell.
we can really start hitting home here. This next song is infamous. Not much needs to be said, really. It's like a beating and withering pulse that has tried to smother and kill all that have tried to face it. For nearly 20 years, it's haunted gamers everywhere. Not just because of the track, but because of the imagery, the symbolism, and the entire game's impact as a whole. Many people may be very pissed off I didn't put this at number one, but eh. It's the Geiger's Battle theme from Earthbound forward slash Mother 2. Ladies and gentlemen, you can thank me for the nightmares later. Number two shocked me so much that I had to stick it on number two just because of how unexpected it was. We're back on the happy little land of Nintendo, where sometimes some truly petrifying things seem to fall through the cracks. Case in point, River Twig's Bed from Super Paper Mario. You thought my heaven wasn't even a song? Well, I bid you welcome to this gorgeous little piece of insanity. This is just a load of fucking noise, with a vague backing track and some slight distorted and reversed talking to accompany it. There's no real cadences, no melody, no time signature, no structure. It's just an onslaught of unharmonic, atonal death. Jesus Christ. It's just alarming, it's disorganised, it's chaotic, and it's terrifying. And finally, my all-time favourite scariest song in all video games may not even be considered as scary as the others preceding it, and to you guys, it might mean absolutely nothing. But to me, this song scarred me from the inside and affected my childhood so much that when I first heard it, I threw down the controller and didn't play the game again for days. I'm talking, of course, about the mansion basement theme from Resident Evil 1. Not the DualShock Director's Cut version, no, 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 because that version is just... Hilarious. No, 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 no. This theme is just fucking horrible. If the daunting strings and all of their slightly ascending, grating and highly intimidating chord progressions were on their own, that would be scary enough. But then, the most startling noise I've ever heard in my entire life decides to rear its ugly face. I don't know what sound it is, I don't know what instrument it is, I don't know what the fucking effect is. It's just baleful evil. It adds so much more depth and threat to both the situation of the game and the area that you're standing in. And nearly everyone I've witnessed who hears this song at this part of the game all of a sudden gets cold feet. And it did that to me. So much so that I didn't play it for a few days after I heard it. Again, that was me, as a kid. But regardless, it still resonates with me to this day. It's ominous, it's aggressive, it's intimidating. And it's only part of what made the original Resident Evil games that much more special and that much more horrifying.
And there you have it, my top 10 favourite scariest tracks in all video gamedom. Yeah. However, even though I adore music, and I even studied it with full A's in college, I feel like that we need a true musical maestro and complete genius to take the stage here and share his or her personal opinion. Daddy, I, I, I can do it. Youngtown? Yeah. Wow. I know. You want to share? Sure. Cool. Yeah. Get on with it then. Okay. Alright then. Awesome. My entry comes from Second Sight, another underrated game with a compelling narrative and a suspenseful soundtrack. The song I've picked is titled Isolation, and honestly, I can't think of a better way to describe it. It contains environmental ambiances such as the trickling of water and something that sounds like heavy doors of a prison cell shutting. A piano is performed to simulate dripping water, potentially making the listener feel anxious. There's also a call and response between the melodic piano piece and the eerie choir. All of these elements come together to generate an uneasy feeling that complements Second Sight's narrative all too well. Um, thank you, Luke. That was, that was certainly uplifting. <laughs> and inevitably, your scary songs are going to be so much more different from my scary songs. So please, in the comments, share what songs scare you. But until next time, if it's your birthday today or watching this video, then happy frickin' birthday to you. And please remember to stay beautiful. And for goodness sake, have an amazing Halloween.